Welcome to the Gunbreaker 60 to 80 skills guide. In this guide we will cover all of your skills as you train to draw magic for 20 turns and say dot 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 better than the rest of them, but also hopefully kill your enemies along the way. Watch as you go from this to, well, still this. Because you basically have your entire toolkit already, but this guide is still framed in the mindset of players newer to Final Fantasy. In that same vein, this will merely be an overview of the actions and how to use them. Optimal rotations are better left to their own in-depth videos, just due to how much complexity is involved in perfect openers and overall rotations. We will, however, be crafting openers as we go, to help new players understand what goes through creating openers, and give them a foothold to push themselves into being able to do it on their own. The goal is to drop players in on the ground level, so they can make strides to improve themselves. All tooltips will be shown at the level cap for each section. 60 for when you first get the job, 70 for Stormblood, and then finally at level 80 for Shadowbringers. I also recommend all players add Sprint and Limit Break to their hotbars, both found in the general tab of your actions menu. And as for how my hotbar builds, it'll make sense at 80. Just put skills on your hotbars in a way that makes you feel comfortable as you are leveling. Everyone has their own way of doing things. Let's begin. Obtaining Gunbreaker is simple. Provided you own the expansions, at level 60 you will be able to undertake the job quest to obtain Gunbreaker in Gridania, right outside the Aetherite Plaza. It has no base class, so any battle class or job may pick this up. You must also complete your level 10 class quest from your starting guild and become certified to join other guilds, which is almost guaranteed to have been achieved by just normally playing the game. Upon becoming Gunbreaker, you have almost all of your skills to begin with. Rather than going through these one at a time, I will go through sets of skills and their effects. By now you have a basic grasp on the game enough to handle it, but I recommend starting off with one of the other tanks first since all the same basic rules of tanking apply, and it's a lot harder to learn those at level 60 than it is at lower levels. Plus you need some accessories to go with your starting gear. This is not a tanking basics guide after all, this is going to be a major focus on gunbreaker skills and not the overall flow of tanking. We also start with a group of tank roll actions. These are some of your most important skills and directly tied with your ability to be a good tank. Check the tank role actions guide in the description if you need an in-depth look into these skills, and I do recommend it. Ultimately, just like the others, we have tank mastery as a passive trait to up our defense. Now, on to our actual toolkit. Again, I'll say, starting at level 60, we basically have everything to start. It is a lot, but I'll break it down as best I can in a way that makes sense. Starting off, our single target global cooldowns. Level 1, Level 4, and Level 26, Keen Edge, Brutal Shell, and Solid Barrel. This is our basic combo to spam over and over. We never want to use these out of order. We always go in the order of Keen Edge, Brutal Shell, and Solid Barrel. Just don't do them out of order. Do the combo like on each of the other tanks, and finish the full combo where you can. We start with Keen Edge doing 200 potency, and lead into Brutal Shell with 300 potency. We finish off the combo with Solid Barrel, doing 400 potency, and adding a cartridge to our Powder Gauge, which we'll get into the use of soon. But you probably noticed I skipped over a bunch of Brutal Shell info. Level 52. Enhanced Brutal Shell. Brutal Shell has a small heal attached for 150 potency. This is not significant enough to treat like a super high level heal, but it is big enough that it does matter, especially since it's more like 300 potency thanks to the added shield you are given, worth exactly the same amount as the heal. But the 150 potency of healing is actually way less than 150 potency from a healer. Every Brutal Shell, including the shield, is about 6% of your health, which by itself is nothing at all. Just keep in mind that Brutal Shell will occur roughly every 4 global cooldowns when all is said and done. 
Your main combo is hardly the only set of single target GCDs you have. So again, while it is super helpful to your survival in the long term, it's not significant in the short term. And in the end, this is not something you will actively capitalize on. It's just an extra bit of healing that happens behind the scenes. It bears worth mentioning, but don't worry about it overly much. Level 30, Cartridge Charge and Burst Strike. Anywhere above level 30, we are able to charge our Powder Gauge. To charge it, simply complete a full combo. We'll see later, but this includes our AoE combo too. This is a further reason to aim to do our combos properly, and finish them completely for cartridges. We can only carry two charges at once, so we'll be using Burst Strike a lot. Burst Strike is very simple. It costs one cartridge of powder, and does an attack of 500 potency, higher than any of our main combo hits in damage. But a very important detail is that, despite being a weapon skill on the GCD, it does not break combos. You can do Keen Edge, then Burst Strike, and still lead into Brutal Shell with no problem at all. This makes doing DPS a lot easier than it would be otherwise. Use cartridges where you can, but don't be afraid to sometimes save a charge either. We'll see why we want to save a charge soon. Level 54, Sonic Break. On a 60 second base cooldown, this is on the global cooldown and does not break combos just like Burst Strike. The initial hit of Sonic Break does 300 potency to the enemy, but also applies a dot to the enemy. Dots tick every 3 seconds, and this dot does 90 potency per tick, over 30 seconds. In total, that's a dot of 900 potency for a total damage amount of 1,200 potency every single minute, all for just one button press. If it wasn't obvious, this is a high priority skill to keep on cooldown, even in small AoE situations. If there's only, say, three enemies, it's worth putting on the toughest enemy of the group, then swapping to AoE spam. But obviously more important is in single target. You're more than guaranteed to get the full duration and potency on tougher enemies and bosses. Even without the dot's full duration though, this quickly becomes the hardest hitting attack you have in only 9 seconds. Use this early and often. Level 60, Gnashing Fang. Salvage Claw, and Wicked Talon. This one works weirdly when you first get it, but it makes sense. All of these are on the GCD, and do not break your combos, despite being an entire combo in itself. But Gnashing Fang has a 30 second base cooldown. Because of this, this is a full combo you use every 30 seconds. But you can't just use it anytime you want. It costs a powder cartridge to get into. This is why you might want to hold off on Burst Strike, because you'll have no gauge to spend on this full combo, which we want to use this every single time we can. Gnashing Fang opens the combo with a potency of 450, which is already higher than Solid Barrel. Entry fee basically pays for itself. But then Savage Claw is 550 potency, and finishing with 650 potency on Wicked Talon. These are high potencies that very much incentivize you using the combo every time you can. It gets stronger later on too, so keep practicing. Just be warned that, while the Gnashing Fang combo does not interrupt your main Keen Edge combo, your Keen Edge combo interrupts your Gnashing Fang combo. Don't try going back and forth between them. When you start your Gnashing Fang combo, finish the entire combo. Level 15, Lightning Shot. Leaving the worst for last, we have Lightning Shot, our ranged attack of 150 potency. This should basically be only used to pull and not much else. It breaks both combos and does almost no damage. If for whatever reason you're out of range of the enemy and you won't break combo, Go ahead and use it, but mid-combo, avoid lightning shot at all costs. Otherwise, the same uses as the other tanks still apply. Use this to pull and that's about it. Or if you die in a boss and provoke is on cooldown for some reason, 
This is your highest enmity generation skill. Spam it to get the boss back. But you really should have Provoke around. With all that gone over, let's talk about our small AoE toolkit. Level 10 and level 40, Demon Slice and Demon Slaughter. This is an AoE combo. You will always use these two skills in this specific order. Meanwhile, Demon Slice does 150 potency and Demon Slaughter is 250 potency, both with a range of 5 yams around you. Demon Slaughter also gives us a powder charge, as mentioned earlier. But the big problem is... There's no AoE use of powder yet. You can only spend it on Burst Strike. I normally try not to go super min-maxi, but this is a weird one I want to discuss. Completely ignoring the existence of cartridges, we want to start using AoE on only just two enemies or more. That's how strong it is. On just two enemies though, we want to be using Burst Strike and Gnashing Fang combo as well, swapping between the enemies to ensure we keep aggro on both. But on three or more enemies, we completely ignore our powder gauge. We just have no choice but to overcap and wait for the herd to thin out to just one or two enemies. You're wasting charges, but it's less waste than actually using the charges. You can just use them later. Like I said, I only bring this up because it's a weird quirk of what Gunbreaker starts with compared to how we'll do things at level 80, but it's otherwise fairly basic of an AoE combo. But now we can move on to our off globals and cooldowns. Level 18 and level 56, Danger Zone and Rough Divide. Starting off, we have to tell Lana about the Danger Zone, which simply does 350 potency on the 30 second cooldown. Whether in AoE or single target, we use this on cooldown. It's literally free damage. Rough Divide, meanwhile, is a skill with charges. Upon using a charge, the cooldown starts rolling to the next charge. It's on a 30 second charge time for a maximum of two charges held at once. In total, that's a one minute cooldown. Each use of Rough Divide is a 200 potency gap closer. I warned this with the other tanks too, but do not use this to pull the boss. We often want to place bosses in the middle of the arena for one reason or another including making our melee team members not have to run a huge distance just to start attacking. Proper boss placement is a lot harder to do when you start the fight already inside the boss. But that gap closing effect is still extremely useful. We do want to use every charge we get for the full damage, but we can keep a charge around if there's going to be a knockback effect soon. Arm's length is our normal knockback mitigation, but sometimes it's not available, or is on cooldown, or might not even work. Plus sometimes, Rough Divide is around at the perfect time to negate a knockback ability. But either way you use it, the best use of this is under the effect of our next skill. Level 2, No Mercy. On a 60 second cooldown, No Mercy grants us 20 seconds of 20% increased damage. That's a big chunk of extra damage and has high uptime. Use this every time you can mid-fight, especially when you're about to do Sonic Break and our Gnashing Fang combo. And Trash Pulls just use it whenever to boost our AoE power by a lot. Just be sure you weave it between GCDs to maximize the number of attacks you get during No Mercy. Put simply, every other Gnashing Fang, use it under No Mercy. Every single Sonic Break, use it with No Mercy. Level 10, Royal Guard. This is our enmity stance for Gunbreaker. I hope before picking up Gunbreaker you understand enmity and stance dancing, but I will repeat it here just in case. On a 10 second recast, that almost never comes into play, this is our enmity stance. Press the button, and the gem here will begin to glow. This means the stance is on, as well as the buff icon in your effects UI. Turn this on, and never turn it off outside of 8-man content in higher levels. You are the tank, and this stance multiplies your aggro generation for all of your actions by an extreme degree. There is absolutely no reason not to have this on before 8-man content. In 8-man content there will be two tanks, 
and in 24 man raids, three tanks. In situations where all tanks are fighting the same enemies, one tank will have on their tank stance and the other tanks will have theirs off. This designates the two different states of tank, main tank and off tank. The main tank is the one in charge of the boss at any given time while the off tanks focus on DPS, pick up the boss if the main tank dies, and will handle additional enemies. There are also sometimes attacks that will specifically target an off tank, or at least the person who is second on the aggro list. The main tank and off tank or tanks can swap multiple times in some fights. If both tanks keep their stances on, there could be fights for aggro and may cause other players to be killed as a result. So be sure to keep that in mind. When you're the only tank, never take this off. Once you get into content with multiple tanks, be sure to work as a team. Often, whoever turns their tank stance on first is volunteering to main tank. And because we're already level 60, we'll be seeing a lot of this. Finishing off, we have all of our defensive cooldowns. Level 6, level 38, level 45, and level 50. Camouflage, Nebula, Aurora, and Super Bolide. In general, you should be using all of your defensive cooldowns. Rotate them, basically only ever using one or two at a time, with exceptions in harder content to need more. Try and time cooldowns for bigger areas of damage where you can, but even light damage moments can use cooldowns. Especially the shorter cooldown ones like Aurora. Generally, the best places are in large multi pools and for tank busters. Camouflage is a 90 second cooldown and reduces damage by 10% and gives us a 50% chance to parry attacks. A successful parry is a 15% damage reduction and assuming exactly 50% of attacks get parried, it averages out to be more like an extra 7.5% mitigation. But not all attacks are equal. Some hurt more, some hurt less. And even if it's a high parry chance, don't rely on it unless it's a trash pool. 50% parry chance against a large mob of enemies, it actually becomes noticeable. Otherwise, Use it specifically for the 10% damage reduction. Nebula is a 120 second cooldown but reduces damage by 30%, which is a huge reduction. It lasts for 15 seconds, so it can reduce from a lot of hits even in bosses. The biggest hits of a fight are definitely where you want this, but trash pulls it's even better since big pulls are more dangerous than most bosses you will meet in dungeons. Next is Aurora. On a 60 second cooldown, this gives you a regen heal over time of 200 potency for 18 seconds. In total, that's 1200 potency. But remember, like with Brutal Shell, 200 potency as a tank is a lot less than 200 potency as a healer. It does heal a lot in total though, around a full 20% of your health when all is said and done. Like all cooldowns, use it when you're taking damage. This is definitely something you want to pair with other cooldowns where possible, since it heals damage after, but doesn't prevent any damage. However, there's more to it. You can place this on anyone. If someone took a big hit or is taking a lot of extra damage, you can put Aurora on them to help the healer keep them alive. This can be especially useful in 8 mans with a co-tank. Finally, we end with our ultimate ability, Super Bolide. On a 6 minute cooldown, we burn our life force and instantly drop down to 1 HP to become immune to almost all damage for 8 seconds. The attacks that go through typically are mechanics you aren't meant to fail, stuff that would kill you anyway. Just about everything else is fair game. This only seems bad, it's actually very strong. Planning ahead with the healer, at least informing them of your plan to use Super Bolide, you can have them stop healing you, and when you get low on HP, just pop Super Bolide. Then the healer can start healing you up now that you've hit 1 HP. White mages are especially adept at this since Benediction is a full heal. 
Just make sure you inform the healer ahead of time of your plan so they can also be ready to act on it. That's the proactive use, but there are emergency uses too. If you made a mistake and stood in AoEs and might die, Super Bolide can save you. Or maybe the healer died and you are next. Before you die, you can Super Bolide and survive for another 8 seconds, which may be long enough for the DPS to be able to finish the fight without you. And finally, in high level content, you often use Super Bolide to completely ignore some mechanics, especially tank busters. Instead of needing to use 3 cooldowns to even survive, but nearly die anyway, just use Super Bolide, hit 1 HP, and pretend there was no mechanic or damage at all. But that is finally our full starting toolkit, which is a lot. It's overall not too much different to the other tanks at this point, and even lesser in some ways, mostly on the DPS side, but we do have some very powerful tools, and plenty enough to make a basic opener. Let's go through it, and see what we can do. Lightning Shot. No Mercy. Sonic Break. Danger Zone. Rough Divide. Keen Edge. Rough Divide, Brutal Shell, Solid Barrel, Gnashing Fang, Savage Claw, and Wicked Talon. Then we just move on to spamming our GCD and using our cooldowns as they come up. And just like with all the other tanks, no defensive cooldowns are in this or any opener I will show. Defensive needs vary from boss to boss, so you can't use them at the same times in every single fight. Some might need cooldowns in the openers, others might need the first cooldown 30 seconds into the fight. Either way, this is the opener that balances being able to position the boss with Lightning Shot and doing a heavy burst. We open with Lightning Shot specifically to be able to position the boss when we pull. We then immediately no mercy to get into our burst, next using Sonic Break to get the dot running early. After this global, we can fit in both Danger Zone and the first of our Rough Divides. This gets both cooldowns running earlier than later, while we continue through our basic combo. But after our Keen Edge, we can use our second Rough Divide, or hold it until later if we want. Any time is good, as long as it is within our No Mercy window. But we continue through with our main combo, just to finish off the combo and be able to get into Gnashing Fang, which we'll go through completely. It's pretty bare to start, but it's going to get a lot bigger as we level up. This is basically just the framework of our opener we'll use at level 80, so be ready to change it up as we level and fit in more skills. I hope this breakdown made your massive starting toolkit a bit easier to manage and understandable. If you're still struggling, try lower level content first, and especially get other tanking experience first, as I said before. We won't be getting many more skills, but they still will change enough. Let's get started on that with Stormblood. Level 62, Bowshock. This is a second dot for us, but an AoE one of 5 yarms around us, and is an off global so we can weave it. On a 60 second cooldown, we can hit the enemies around us for 200 potency, and put a 90 potency dot on them for 15 seconds. That's a 450 potency dot, and a total 650 potency for the full attack. Get this out on every pull, especially trash pulls once you have everything gathered up. 650 potency is a lot of power per enemy to not use every time you can. Be sure you have no mercy up to, to make it 20% stronger. Also keep in mind, you can use this on single target too. It's free damage, and it's not that long of a cooldown. You will have it up by the time you get to the next trash pool, and you'll get it out multiple times per boss. Level 64, Heart of Light. This is an interesting one, as Heart of Light is a 90 second recast for a raid-wide mitigation tool. You and all of your allies within 15 yarms will take 10% less magic damage for 15 seconds. This can be used in some trash pulls, 
mostly only the ones with magical enemies, but it's rarely useful there. But in bosses? By now you've seen just about all of them have some form of raid-wide damage that hits everyone, no matter what you do. That's where Heart of Light comes in. When one of these attacks is coming up, especially the harder-hitting ones, use Heart of Light to reduce the damage. Just about every raid-wide in the game is magical, so it's safe to throw it out every way you can. Heart of Light is especially useful in the harder pieces of content, but everything you do deserves Heart of Light too, even if it doesn't overall hurt that much. Level 68, Heart of Stone. This is your new go-to cooldown. On a very, very short 25 second cooldown, this reduces damage taken by 15% for 7 seconds. Further, you can actually put this on an ally instead. So if an ally has been standing in bad things all dungeon long, you can put this on them to help them out a little bit. Maybe they have a Voln stack and a raid wide is coming up. You can use Heart of Stone on them to counteract the Voln ups. Alternatively, 8 man content, you can use Heart of Stone on your co tank while you're not holding the boss. Basically, you can use this just like Aurora when it comes to teammates. The 7 second duration seems like a huge weakness, and it kind of is, but ultimately the super short cooldown ensures it's properly balanced. It's available for just about everything you can want it around for. Trash, tank busters, randomly throwing it out, that 15% comes into a lot of use. And this makes for the perfect skill to pair with other cooldowns. Camouflage in Heart of Stone, Nebula in Heart of Stone. Basically, everything can have Heart of Stone attached, but even alone, this is strong even for the duration. Be sure to use it every chance you get. Level 70, Continuation, Jugular Rip, Abdomen Tear, and Eye Gouge. This is the only job quest skill. If you've not been doing your job quests, go back and do them now. You definitely want this skill. This very painful set of mutilations is a special set of combo skills within our Gnashing Fang combo. Gnashing Fang gives us ready to rip, and Beyblades us to use jugular rip. Savage Claw gives us ready to tear, and lets us abdomen tear until it is done. Wicked Talon gives us ready to gouge, and lets us eye gouge like we saw another Sticker Star sequel. All three of these are off globals, so we're expected to weave these between our Gnashing Fang combo hits. We now need to do six hits in a row, but within the same period of time. So in order, and within the same seven and a half seconds of time, we do Gnashing Fang, Jugular Rip, Savage Claw, Abdomen Tear, Wicked Talon, Eye Gouge. The biggest key point to mention is all of these new skills are on continuation. Upon using any of the gnashing combo GCDs, continuation becomes the connected skill. So be sure to put this in a place you find comfortable to weave during your gnashing combo. Especially because of the potencies. They are, in order, 260, 280, and 300 potency each. That's 840 potency within the same period of time. Yes, it's a lot of extra work, but this is a huge amount of free damage on top of your other strong hits. This is the big reason why Gunbreaker has the hardest DPS rotation, but the highest damage of the tanks. But with that, we have two skills, technically four, to fit into our opener. It's really not that much, but we do have to shift a couple things around because of it. So let's do that shifting around and go over what we do now at level 70. Lightning Shot, No Mercy, Sonic Break, Bow Shock, Danger Zone, Keen Edge, Brutal Shell, Solid Barrel, Gnashing Fang, Rough Divide, Jugular Rip, Savage Claw, Abdomen Tear, Wicked Talon, 
eye gouge, rough divide, then go through our combos and using powder charges as normal. The big changes start with Bowshock pushing out Rough Divide to a later weave. Bowshock is stronger, so we want that on cooldown more than we want Rough Divide on cooldown. We weave it together with Danger Zone like before. We pushed Rough Divide all the way back to our second change, mostly to get in some early muscle memory for our AD opener. When we get into our gnashing combo, we double weave Rough Divide and Jugular Rip together. We can actually double weave during this section, which is good to keep in mind. Finally, the continuation section is in itself a big change. We do a lot more during our Gnashing Fang combo, and be sure to get used to using it every time you can for all three hits. Again, make sure continuation is in a comfy spot for use. Otherwise, it's all pretty simple. Beyond the opener, we just use stuff on cooldown, spend our charges, when we get them, and repeat the opener every 60 seconds basically. We have been maximizing everything we do under No Mercy. We've already maximized the output of our No Mercy window, so it's just a matter of keeping our rotation going afterwards and keeping stuff on cooldown as we continue on. The barrier to entry truly was just the toolkit we started with. We haven't changed much at all, but it's enough to matter. And we have one more trick up our sleeve to learn, in Shadowbringers. Level 72, Faded Circle. We finally have our AoE Cartridge Spender. In a 5 yom radius around you, just like the rest of your AoE, you do 320 potency to all enemies hit. And just like Burst Strike, this will not interrupt your combos. At this point, you know how to AoE. Anytime there's multiple enemies, this is worth using. And now, your single target cartridge spenders are left to the wayside when there's just not one enemy. It's pretty significantly a power boost, all things considered. Two or more enemies, bring out the faded circle. Level 76, Bloodfest. Bloodfest is on a 90 second cooldown. We draw magic from the enemy to gain two charges of our powder gauge instantly. You must have an enemy targeted to use it, so you can't use it outside of combat as this will generate aggro on whatever you use it on immediately, but otherwise you can use it the moment after you pull to get free charges. Make sure you spend your existing charges before using Bloodfest though, or you'll lose out on the uses. This is really nice in trash pulls too. We did just get Faded Circle, so we can do a nice burst of damage with two Faded Circles out of Bloodfest, in addition to the quick charges we get out of our AoE combo. The number of free charges this gives us over a run is huge. In both AoE and single target, use Bloodfest to get two free charges and spend them as quick as you can, especially while under no mercy. But. This is the final skill we needed to round out our opener. From this point on, this is the opener we want to follow when pulling. Just have a final reminder that there's always room to improve and much more optimization available to you, especially including other openers that don't involve starting with Lightning Shot. Lightning Shot, Bloodfest, No Mercy, Sonic Break, Bow Shock, Danger Zone, Gnashing Fang, Rough Divide, Jugular Rip, Savage Claw, Abdomen Tear, Wicked Talon, Eye Gouge, Burst Strike, Rough Divide, Keen Edge, Brutal Shell, Solid Barrel, Burst Strike. Because of the long cooldown on Bloodfest, we pair it with No Mercy after our Lightning Shot. Additionally, this gets us immediately to two charges, which lets us go into our Gnashing Fang combo earlier than before. Because of this, after the Bow Shock and Danger Zone weave, we go right into Gnashing Fang and do everything as we did before. Remember how I moved Rough Divide back to the combo section? This is why. We double weave our first Rough Divide alone with our Jugular Rip. 
we can't get it out any earlier than this placement without having to move Danger Zone or Bowshock back into where this one is right now. After getting our full gnashing combo, we can use our second Bloodfest cartridge on Burst Strike and Weave in Rough Divide as well. From here we're out of stuff to do, except continue on and spam our 1-2-3 combo and use charges on Burst Strike. This is the best order to use everything in a front-loaded burst window. It doesn't perfectly align with party buffs, but if you're the one who's pulling, this is one of the best ways to handle it. Just remember, there are other ways, other guides, and more than one way to improve beyond what I show you. Level 80, Danger Zone Mastery, and Blasting Zone. We moved out of the Danger Zone into the Blasting Zone. This skill has merely seen an upgrade in potency and animation to be way flashier than it once was. But the new animation makes sense because it now does a massive 800 potency hit. And remember, every other Blasting Zone we do is under the effect of No Mercy, so it gets even stronger there. It's not the greatest skill to end with, but at least it is super flashy. And if nothing else, Gunbreaker is a flashy job for just swinging around a gunblade. Thank you for watching my Gunbreaker 60 to 80 skills guide. Feel free to give feedback or ask questions on what might still be confusing to you. My goal is to help players improve in whatever ways I can. Take care, and have fun in your adventures across Eorzea. May the power of Ananidhogs lay waste to your enemies.